for another episode of um, the John McTaggart Photographer Channel. Um, it's kind of, you know, obviously, you know, the channel is geared more towards the advice from someone who does this full time, which is me, um, which has been quite challenging, to be honest, in the last 18 months or so with COVID and all that kind of stuff. But we're still hanging in there and still doing the best we can. It's actually opening up a little bit. Um, at least here in the U.S. it is, kind of in my, uh, where I'm at. Um, we're getting a few more events. We're getting a few more things booked at the very least. Uh, so things are hopefully turning around here for myself and for a lot of you out there I know that are kind of going through the same thing. So today I'm going to talk just very briefly about something that, that sort of came up um, at the most recent assignment I was at. Uh, I had an assignment through a uh, university that I work with here, and I was not the only photographer there. It was an event one of their first events that were in person in quite some time. So what had happened was the venue hired an event photographer as well. And I work for the university, so I was there also. So it's kind of weird. This, this guy I had actually known, he's been freelancing around here for quite some time. And very nice guy, very capable photographer. Seems like, a, you know, my, my experience with him has been pretty good. Well, he, I pulled out my camera gear, which right now I'm shooting my event outfit, or actually my total outfit at this point, is an X-T3 with the grip and a 16 to 55 28 and a, uh, what is it, 50 to 140 28. And that's pretty much what I roll with every day. I have a couple Godox flashes that I use as well, and, and one, of the, one of those little Roken on, I think it's 12 millimeter of the manual focus deals, in case I need something super crazy wide or something like that. So I, I have that, although I very, very, very seldom use it, very seldom use it actually. So anyhow, we, I was talking to him a little bit during the event, um, kind of when there was a little bit of a lull time. It was one of the kind of like a fundraiser dinner type thing at a museum in town here, around town. And he had asked me about my Fuji gear. And one of the first questions was, he asked me is why I was using it, <laughs> which struck me kind of funny at the time. But the more I thought about it, the more it made sense, because honestly, it's not what you see. It just isn't. I mean, I've shoot hundreds of assignments over the years, editorial-wise, event-wise, with a host of other photographers. And I could probably count on one hand the number of times I've been there with someone who is actually like a, a working photographer that shoots exclusively Fuji. N not many. Um, I don't, you know, I, to be quite honest with you, as someone who does and actually left it for a while and came back, um, I don't really understand that. So I'm gonna, I tried to explain it to him and I'm going to try to explain it to some of you guys. And maybe maybe the reasoning behind this will help you with your photography as well. Because look, listen, it's tempting to switch, especially now. There's a couple things going on within Fuji. They have a new top guy there who kind of came out, what, I think a couple weeks ago now or last week, and basically said, you know, Fuji's probably going to make their money off of health care, the healthcare system and semiconductor components. Well, that's not really very reassuring to people who are dedicated to the cameras, <laughs> such as myself. Um, and that does worry me a little bit, to be honest with you, because I did hear something similar from people at Olympus a while back, and they wound up selling their company, selling their brand. Now, I don't think that Fuji is going to sell. I have no reason to believe they will. But I'm also uh, my enthusiasm and confidence for them and their products come moving forward is a little bit kind of a notch down than what it used to be. Now, it's certainly not a notch down enough for me to be even dreaming of changing or switching brands. That's a, from as most of you probably know, that's a pretty big undertaking and it's a pretty expensive one too. Um, so that's not really a, a factor in this right now, but it, you know, if, if the firmware updates start to slow and these products start to be more more just a tweak of what they have already, uh, that's going to be even more concerning to me. I mean, I have not used that X-T30 Mark II, but I've kind of read a little bit online that a lot of it is essentially or could have been a firmware update that instead of making the firmware update, they just simply put it in a different in a camera body and sold it. Um, you know, I know that there's no money in firmware updates but there is money in brand loyalty and half the reason why I love Fuji is because they seem to be so consumer friendly and so customer friendly and so photographer friendly and the firmware updates are a large part of that. So anyway, that's another another topic. Either way, this guy asked me why I shot with the system. Um, and like I said, there's reasons why. He has a Nikon. 
Uh, I think he was had a D4S or D4, it, kind of an older full frame, big tank of a Nikon body with your standard 7200 and the, um, what would I think it was? I think he had the 24 to 70 version of their like mid range, mid zoom lens here. Literally uh, hundreds and hundreds of those I've seen over the years strapped around guys and gals that shoot full time. Um, and that's fine. I've had I've had one. They're great. Their tanks, image quality is fantastic. It performs really well. Uh, but as I was explaining to Dave, this photographer I was with here, uh, it doesn't. I don't need it. I mean, it's not. It doesn't suit me real well. I like the Fuji system uh, mainly for a. The output is fantastic. The image quality is great. He shot with a flash all night long. Um, which I very rarely shoot with any flash whatsoever. Don't need to. I can very comfortably shoot uh, at 6400 with my X-T3 uh, wide open. And if I had a faster group of lenses, I would even be more comfortable with that because I could probably drop that down a little bit. Um, and to be quite, you know, the mistake I made when I revamped my Fuji setup was I bought an X-T3. Now, it's not a mistake because the X-T3 is such a bad product. It's a fabulous camera. I love it. It's great. It's, it's done everything I have asked it to do and then some. And I'm anticipating that to, to stay the same. But I actually like the rangefinder style better. This is my X-Pro1, which is sort of my my baby here um, with the 35 f or f1.4 on it i like that style probably should have gone that direction and maybe used some primes as well but at the time i tried to work within a budget that i had x pro 3 bodies are still way more expensive than xt3s and uh piecing together a kit of prime lenses probably should have done that to be honest with you and i'll i'll truthfully i'll be probably working on changing that, um, selling the 16 to 55 eventually and try to replace it with maybe a 23, 14, something along those lines that works a little bit better in low light and is a little more compact. Um, all those, those zooms are fantastic lenses. They're big, they're bulky for, especially for this Fuji system. But essentially I, I've decided on Fuji after experimenting with many, many cameras, many cameras over the years, uh, just because I like the form of them the size is awesome. I love to be able to control most of the most of the camera with dials. Um, I can do that on pretty much every Fuji body that's of a professional level or quality. Um, they're durable. They're fast. The lenses are second to none in my opinion. Still, I love them more than as much or more than anything I've used. Um, I have not used Leica, honestly. I am very tempted at M10 bodies and and some of their glass. But you're talking. I mean, I could buy a car for what a Leica event setup would cost me. So that's probably not gonna happen with me right now. Uh, maybe one day, maybe not. But right now I'm happy with Fuji. Um, I, and I shoot it full time, all the time. I've never wanted to really knock on wood. Any problem here with them in terms of the performance or hangups or freezes, uh, anything like that. They're just a great camera. They're, they're at a great price point. They're flexible and versatile enough of a, of a camera to be used professionally uh, on a regular basis. The only thing I might not do is it's hard. It would be difficult, I think, to shoot sports full time with them. But I do know people that do it. Eric Francis is a guy you can check him out. Um, just kind of Google him. He's an amazing sports photographer and he's an exclusively a Fuji guy. That big 200 F2 they have is magnificent. So uh, it, it can be done. I, I have not tried it, but I can see that that could be one area where there's a little bit of a difference between what, what you know, old, older school DS, DSLRs and maybe even the, the Sony system now, which I do see kind of cropping up. But I thought I'd make this quick video just to sort of uh, get back into the waters here of the YouTube and um, try to get some thoughts. If you guys can comment down below on what it is about the system that you guys love, I'd kind of like to know that. Um, because I'm, a, you know, obviously a huge proponent of the system itself and recommend it to everybody and everybody that asks, um, even at the professional level. And I think part of it, too, is uh, now that I think about it. Sorry, kind of different train of thought. But it is I like the fact that it's it's a great personal camera as well as a professional one. When I had my big D4 I'm never going to take that to my nephew's birthday party, to be honest with you. But I'll bring my, my Fuji setup 
all the time. I mean, most of the time I'll use this, um, but I, I've used the X-T3 before with some of the long, you know, some of the, with the long lens and all that kind of stuff at Little League games and birthday parties and Christmases and holidays and all that kind of stuff. Can't say the same about that. So I think the, the versatility between fun use and full-time use for me anyway is a big factor why I shoot it as well. Um, and I just, you know, I just love the camera gear. I love the cameras. And I guess that's pretty much it. So uh, if you like this kind of content, please be sure to like. You can click the little bell there too. It'll notify you when we get new uh, videos up. As well as subscribe if you can. That would be great. Helps me out. And that um, helps me, you know, kind of honestly gives me some motivation to, to make more content, more some more videos. So next video we have coming out is probably going to talk a little bit more about this. The X-Pro1 um, 35F1.4 setup, which I have been using for a very, very long time now. Um, this has been sort of always with me, despite the camera system I use professionally. I've always kind of had these, this one, and I want to, even though it's 2021 now, and this camera body is ancient in terms of camera technology, it's still the camera that I would choose if someone said you have to go to Desert Island. So that's it for now. I will catch up with you guys later. Uh, stay safe and happy shooting, guys. Bye.